Hi, I'm Matt Sargent with ABC Acres here in Hamilton, Montana. We're out here today in our greenhouse and I'm sitting next to a lush stand of primarily sun hemp. We're going to take a close up look at it right now. All right, this is a close up of our primarily sun hemp cover crop, or as I have discussed, not necessarily a cover crop, but just letting you see what's going on. Look, we even have some ladybugs. That's awesome. Okay, so now you've seen it. You might have noticed that there were a few other things growing in there, and that's why it's not necessarily a cover crop. The focus of today's video is to talk about cover crops, intercropping, living mulches, and the difference between them. I see a lot of times people on various uh, gardening or homesteading or farming forums using the terms all synonymously, and there is a difference, and it's important to know that difference. That way, if you're seeking advice or offering advice, you know what the person's talking about, because in a living mulch type scenario, which is more of what we have going on here, you're going to manage it different than you would a cover crop. So real quick, before I talk about managerial differences, I want to talk about the differences of those three things. A cover crop, a true cover crop, is a planting of one or more species, and in the permaculture mindset, and in reality, a cocktail, a mixture of different species in that cover crop is more beneficial than just a cover crop. But it's something you plant before a cash crop or you know a crop that you're going to harvest for your house to maintain ground cover, help control annual weeds, feed the soil, plant exudates, and maintain the soil biology. We all know that bare soil is dying soil, mulch soil is better than uh, nothing, but a living plant in the system is far better than anything else. If you have to just go with mulch, as I re recommend and I'm a firm believer in, use the magic mulch, link is right here, but uh, even better than the magic mulch is a living plant. So the cover crop does that, and then it, before your planting of your cash crop, you're gonna terminate that cover crop in some way or form, either incorporate it into the soil, lay it down as a mulch, and then plant your cash crop into that bed that has been protected by your cover crop. Here we have more of a living mulch system because in the um, flyover, hopefully you notice, we do have some baby eggplants that we have planted right here. We have an elderberry here. These are crops that we are gonna utilize. We utilize this elder for uh, elder propagation. Check that out. Eggplants we use for eggplants. So when all is said and done, we're not really gonna be terminating this sun hemp. Um, for those of you not familiar with sun hemp, it's a tropical legume, fixes a lot of nitrogen and creates a lot of biomass. So if at any point we feel that this sun hemp is getting too tall and out competing our eggplants, then we're gonna manage our living mulch. And I'll talk about management strategies after I've covered the various forms. And then as far as intercropping, intercropping can be a lot like uh, utilizing a living mulch. Um, but it's typically two different crops, something that you're actually going to utilize instead of just keeping this to have good ground cover to benefit the eggplants, if that makes any sense. So we could, per se, have the sun hemp also be a crop. We could make it a seed crop and sell seed. Um, and if we were going to do that, what we might do is cut it a couple times so it doesn't interfere with the growth of the eggplants and once the eggplants are nice and tall maybe as they're ending the nearing the end of their life cycle then we stop cutting and chopping and dropping the sun hemp and let it go to seed and harvest the seed that way we have multiple things living beneficially for each other in the system but we're also getting a crop out of both of them and so that's kind of the big difference between a living mulch in intercropping is a living mulch you have just for the benefits of the ground cover and the exudates of the plant itself but you're not actually harvesting anything from that all right so as far as maintaining these various systems or utilizing them to the best of your abilities a lot of managing a cover crop 
or even a living mulch. It's going to kind of depend on your resources, your framework, your context. We've touched lightly on context in the past, probably due to do a real video about defining your own context, but it's kind of just touches base on the resources, your goals, your desires. So in this situation, I've kind of touched about how we're going to manage this living mulch. If at any point we feel that it is out competing the eggplants, we're going to come in and chop and drop it. We'll be putting more biomass into the uh, bed here. When we, since it's a legume, when we chop and drop it, the roots and the leaf material will add nitrogen to the system to the benefit of the elderberry and the eggplants. And as the root system of this dies back to match the pruning or the chop and drop, that will also add organic matter deeper into the soil. That's one of our goals here is to penetrate more, get some organic matter deeper into the beds without having to broad fork or till it. But it will also release nitrogen from the roots and as the roots die and decompose, it'll release even more water so we won't have to irrigate as much. So that is primarily with living mulches, you're managing those living mulches with chop and drop, whether that's mechanically with a mower, a weed eater, or just a scythe or a little sickle. Those are all ways to control a living mulch. Frequently, one of the best living mulches you can use is Dutch white clover, which doesn't require a lot of maintenance because it's low growing anyways. We're trying to generate some biomass in here. That's why we went with the sun hem. As far as managing a cover crop, well, before we get into cover crops, we should talk about intercropping. When you're intercropping, you're just gonna have to manage both crops or three or four, however many crops you have planted in that small space. You're gonna have to manage each crop to the best that you can to get the best production of that crop without interfering with the other crop. And then as far as managing cover crops, there's a whole bunch of different ways that you can terminate and use them to your best. And there's shades of gray. I am of the belief that the best thing you can do is terminate it and leave the plant material on the surface as a mulch. Let the root system that's in the soil die back, decompose there on itself. Most commonly, we see people mow or graze the cover crop, get it down low, and then they're incorporating it into the soil. And that can be, sometimes that's necessary. If your cash crop is carrots, you can't have a heavy mulch. It's also important to know that whatever your uh, material is, some cover crops or some crops used as cover crops such as rye can be allopathic. So you wanna let that material break down, decompose for a period of time before you try seeding anything. Other words, the allopathic effects of the rye won't allow your seeds to germinate. Um, so you can mow or graze and then incorporate that material into the so soil by tillage or plowing or double digging, whatever tools you have available to you. My favorite way to terminate a cover crop is to trample it and to roll crimp it. And in just a second, I'll show you the roller crimper attachment we have for our walk behind tractor. But it's basically a lawn roller with some angle irons on it that will lay the plant down as it rolls over it and then the angle irons are putting little crimps in the stalk so it can't re-sprout and then you have this as a mulch the roots in the soil dying back and creating more organic matter all right so this is our roller crimper at some point we'll be showing it in action it'll probably be midsummer, uh fall but basically it's like a lawn roller. It rolls, it attaches to the front of whatever you're using to drive it. This is designed for a two wheel tractor, such as a BCS or a Grillo. But if you can imagine a four foot tall stand of rye or vetch, or even the sun hemp that we're showing in the greenhouse, this rolling through, knocking it all down, the crimp is terminating or crimping the stalks or the this angle iron is crimping the stalks of the plant so it won't re-sprout all of a sudden now you have roots dying in the soil a really dense mulch on top of the soil it's going to be a great bed to transplant or seed into so it, a farm scale thing you can have this on the front of the tractor and a transplanter or a seeder running behind it and get everything done in one pass 
Um, with the BCS, you have to go back through with another pass to seed or to transplant, but that's not the end of the world. If something like this is a little bit bigger for your scale than you can really justify, I've seen people take a piece of two by four as wide as their garden beds is, um, and when they're ready to terminate the cover crop, they take that two by four and they bolt a piece of angle iron to it. And that angle iron will give the crimping effect that this does. And then with the rope attached to either end of it, they can just pick it up and step on it to lay down the mulch and crimp it in the exact same way. So this is how crimping works. And in my opinion, it's one of the best ways to terminate a cover crop because you don't have to disturb the soil in any way, shape or form and you're going you're gonna to maximize the benefits of your cover crop. But this is for cover crops, not for intercropping, and definitely not for living mulches. So there you've seen it, uh, our basic introduction to the different strategies for having living covers, cover crops, intercropping, uh, living mulches. We've shown you various ways and discussed how to manage those different strategies to the best of your knowledge. Hopefully you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know. Until next time, happy growing.